Good morning. We welcome you to uh, St. Joseph, St. Pius X Parish to worship together. A uh, couple announcements. If there's anyone at your home or that you may know who would like to receive communion, please contact the parish office. The Stations of the Cross will be held on Friday, February 26th at St. Pius X Church at 6 p.m. And finally, please join us for a Zoom Bible study to be held during the season of Lent from February 24th to March 24th. Look in the bulletin on Facebook or on our website for the Zoom link. Hope to see you there. Today's Mass is offered for um, Mary Wilson. Uh, our altar server is Dakota Zinkovich. Um, our organist is Denise Sullivan, joined by the choir, and I, Pete Zimmerman, will be your lector. reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, See, I am now establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that was with you, all the birds and the various tame and wild animals that were with you and came out of the ark. I will establish my covenant with you, that never again shall I bodily, all bodily creatures be destroyed by the waters of a flood there shall not be another flood to devastate the earth. God added, This is the sign that I am giving for all ages to come, of the covenant between me and with you, 
and every living creature with you. I, see, I set my bow in the clouds to serve as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the uh, clouds, I will recall, recall the covenant I have made between me and you and all things so that the water shall never be, again become a flood to destroy all mortal beings. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, Christ suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God, put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. In it he also went to preach to the spirits in prison, who had once been disobedient, while God patiently waited in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few persons, eight in all, were saved through the water. This pre prefigured baptism which saves you now, it is not a removal of dirt from the body, but an appeal to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with the angels, authorities, and powers subject to him. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert, and he remained in the desert for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The gospel of the Lord. Well, the uh, season of Lent is upon us, and here we are, uh, as we do every year around this time, we uh, begin by hearing the story of the temptation of Christ in the desert, spending 40 days and 40 nights in the desert, and, um, and it's a, uh, as I said, every year we begin with one of the three uh, synoptic gospels telling us of Jesus' temptation in the desert. And, and Mark's, of course, is, is the one we listened to this year, but Mark's is the shortest of, the, of those. He doesn't go into what the temptations were. He just tells us that Jesus was tempted in the desert by the devil. And, that, um, and he tells us, too, that Jesus was driven out into the desert, into the wilderness. It was uh, almost as though he was compelled to go. And um, what Mark is getting at there is a, is a connection to Moses. If you recall, Moses, of course, who is the great prophet of, of Israel, who, um, who gave, brought the, gave the law to the uh, people of Israel and freed them from slavery, um, Moses was driven out in the, into the desert, not by the Spirit, but by Pharaoh, because he feared for his life, and so he was compelled to go to the desert, to the wilderness, where nobody would, would search for him. And so he left Egypt and went, went into the desert where he met his wife, and he received his calling, his vocation, to go back to, to Egypt and to proclaim that uh, Pharaoh should let his people, let God's people go. And, um, and so it's a, again, it's a, it's a connection to that great event of salvation for the Jewish people, that great event of the exodus, of the freedom from slavery of the Jewish people. And, uh, and Jesus is, being connected to that event and um, as, as we're told in the, in the um, message that Jesus when he comes back preaches it's a new message, it's a new kind of um, freedom from slavery from a different kind of slavery the slavery to sin Lent was first uh, before, before it became an official season of the church, it was originally just um, a time before the celebration of Easter every year when, pe when the people who were going to be baptized that year were prepared for it. And how did they do that? Well, they, they didn't have an RCIA. They didn't have catechism as such. They would, uh, the, the people who wanted to be baptized would would be cover themselves in sackcloth and ashes. And they would wait outside of the church or the, the place where they worshipped and would not go in. And they would repent, as we're in, in sackcloth and ashes, asking God to grant them freedom from sin. 
And so it was a season of preparation for baptism for them. And it has become, for us, a season of repentance as well. But it's, also, it's meant to be a season in which we prepare ourselves to renew the vows we, we took at our own baptism. And of course, most of us took those vows. Uh, well, we didn't take them. Our, our parents and our godparents took them for us at our baptism. Most of us, though, went at confirmation, we renewed those vows again. And then, as uh, reasonable facsimiles of adults, we, we uh, renewed those vows ourselves. And we took those vows ourselves. The vows to renounce Satan and all his works. The vows to, uh, to, to believe in Jesus Christ as, as our Lord and our Savior. To believe in God the Father. And to believe in the, in the Holy Spirit and the Catholic Church. And so, as we go through this season of Lent this year, it should be a time when we consider those vows that we'll make again in our creed today and, um, and to consider those vows, what it is that, we are, that is being asked of us and prepare ourselves throughout this season through prayer, fasting, and almsgiving to again renew, one more, one more time, again renew our vow our vows of baptism and to again receive that great gift of grace of, of freedom from sin freedom from the slavery to sin and freedom from death that Jesus promises us in our baptism We pray that the church may continue to preach faith and repentance. We pray to the Lord. Lord that the leaders of nations may embrace God's covenant of peace and justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord that people who are attached to material things will learn that no one lives on bread alone. We pray to the Lord. That we will renew our baptism through humble confession of our sins, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray that in this time of isolation, we will continue to be generous to others with our time and support the needs of the hungry with food donations in our parish with our envelopes and online giving, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for the people of Texas and in the southern states who are suffering without electricity and water and heat. We pray that they will be given strength by the Lord and the generosity of others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died, Nellie Anger and especially Mary Wilson, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the intentions listed in our parish book of intentions and for those that we hold in the silence of our hearts.
These intentions we pray to the Lord. Lord, we are praying. For those who suffer the sin of racism, prejudice, bias, or hatred in any form, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O Lord, as we walk through this holy season of Lent, help us to remember those who do not have the things we take for granted. Enough food and clean water, a comfortable house, good schools, and hope for the future. We pray for our brothers and sisters at St. Eugene's Parish and for all the people of Haiti. We pray that our sacrifices and offerings will help to ease the troubles of life for them. Give us awareness that our parishes are united in a common bond of faith in you, and that through our prayers and offerings, may we, may we grow in awareness of you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray now, my sisters and brothers, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands and the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all this holy church. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Yes, Lift up your heart. Yes, Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining forty long days from earthly food, Christ consecrated through his fast the pattern of of our Lenten observance, and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the lemon of malice, so that, celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over, at last, to the eternal Paschal feast. And so, with, com with the company of the angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim.
them and God your spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. And giving you thanks, he sent the blessing. Broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more giving thanks, he said the blessing. He gave the cup to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and grant her the peace and get into your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us pray for peace with one another and throughout the entire world.
takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am my brother. the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, bring us to our lasting life.
Since I cannot receive you sacramentally at this moment, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. And unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you.